The phone rings. You pick it up. It's an alien on board a spacecraft from the future calling you with a message. What do you do? Well, that's what Jack Sarfati, he's a scientist. That's what he claims happened to him when he was a young boy. He also claims it happened to hundreds of other young boys. And this happened in New York City in the 1950s. I've got a great clip to show you. So let's jump in and hear it straight from Mr. Sarfati of this absolutely mind-boggling story, getting a phone call from the future from an alien. All right, let's jump in. Hi, I'm Patrick. This is Vetted. Hit that subscribe button, y'all. If you want to see videos like this every day, we put out a new one every single day, 12 p.m. Central Standard Time, USA. Of course, hit that like button. That really helps us out a lot. And lastly, please comment down below what you think of this story. It's absolutely bonkers, y'all. So I can't wait to see uh, what y'all say about Jack Sarfati in general. If you know who he is, I'll put a link down in the description of more about him. Um, and of course, a link to this video, this clip I'm about to show you. He went on Danny Jones's podcast a few months ago and he dropped this story, which I'd never heard before. So let's just jump in. I moved back with my mother when I'm about 13 in Brooklyn. And that's when the phone call happened. The... The, uh, I'm alone, uh, and my mother's somewhere out. It's a summer night, it's a nice warm summer night, probably August, and uh, the phone rings, and I pick up the phone, and I hear, uh, you know, first, you know, I could hardly I hear just like, um, like, you know, like coordinates, you know, like numbers, like seven, six, uh, uh, yeah, but in a strange voice, uh, but very low, and then and I'm trying to listen, I don't quite, you know, can't get it. And then the volume increases, volume increases. And I hear also clunking, like switching circuits. Oh, I also had, a, I was reading a book at the time on the early computers, mechanical relay computers called switching circuits, Bell Laboratories. Mm. So I'm, I'm hearing like the clunking. So it's like, it's like a computer, okay? What I thought, you know, what people thought of computers, well, 1953, hardly anybody even knew what a computer was, but I did, you know? Uh, and so, uh, and then it gets louder and, then Stephen Hawking. <laughs> you know who Stephen Hawking Oh, yeah. Is? Okay, well. Was, you know what he sounded like because he couldn't talk? The mm -hmm. metallic voice. It's the, it's the Stephen Hawking voice in 1953. Okay. I'm hearing this right. And it says and identifies itself as a computer on board a flying saucer from the future. Hmm. Back from the future. Okay. <laughs> verbatim well I, i'm sort of paraphrasing but yeah i mean not yeah i'm paraphrasing I, you know this said it was on a flying saucer though yeah it was says well i think it may i think it said it was on board a spacecraft from the future okay it may have said flying but you know i was into flying saucers already by then so mm -hmm. it was you know space mm -hmm. from the, it's a time machine time travel right away i'm told it's time travel and they said they right away he's told it's time travel just Aliens from the future, just let's get this out of the way. Time travel. Let's just start there, young boy on Earth. <laughs> I don't know about this story, y'all. Um, I don't know about this one. It's, it was, you know, space, mm -hmm. from the, it's a time machine. Time travel. Right away, I'm told it's time travel. And they said they've, that uh, they are contacting uh, for, uh, several hundred, I think they said even 400, they heard the 400 young receptive minds that they want to teach their technology to. Bear in mind what's happening now, you know, with the congressional all this stuff, right? Mm. They want to teach their technology. And at first I thought, you know, because I was a pretty streetwise kid, and uh, I thought it was, you know, it's a joke. I thought it was a joke. Because I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm not out of touch with reality. I mean, I, 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 How old are you? I was... Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <Let> me... <laughs> I'm sorry. He just like, I'm not out of touch with reality after he just got done saying he got a phone call from the future from an alien uh, and they contacted four other 
young boys and wanted, you know, teach him their technology. And then he's like, you know, I'm not out of touch with reality. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm not trying to make fun. It just caught me off guard. I got the giggles. I apologize. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, okay. No, Jack, you're not out of touch with reality. I'm not saying this is impossible. I'm just that caught me off guard. Okay, I apologize again. I got the giggles. Let's let's. Thirteen. <laughs> I thought it was yeah, it was a joke. I thought it was a joke because I'm I'm not you know I'm not out of touch with reality. I mean, I, 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 how old are you? I was thirteen, <laughs> nineteen fifty three. Thirteen years old, and I'm trying to think who's okay. Go okay. I got the joke. You know who's doing this? And then I, suddenly it occurs to me, none of my friends of my age group were as smart as me in terms of science. You know, they weren't into all this stuff. They were like normal kids. I was an abnormal kid. <laughs> I was a nerd. But these kids, yeah, they're just all American, you know, back, you know. Uh, and uh, so it couldn't have been a kid. And also, they none of them had access to the kind of technology that can make a cold metallic voice, right? And I think it's got to be an adult. You know, this is like going through my mind, you know. And, uh, and then, so, so that could be dangerous. Yeah, you know, I was... You know, that there may be weirdos around. And, uh, but then it said, so I, yeah, I let it continue. And it said I had to now tell them out of my own free will if I wanted to participate in this project. <laughs> and then, you know, did you ever see this thing with, you know, like you have the little devil on one shoulder and the angel mm. on the other shoulder and say, do it, do it, don't do it, don't do it. You know, like, uh, and I'm thinking, and I'm thinking to myself, no. I think, you know, internal dialogue, no. But then I feel like an electric shock go from the base of my spine to the back of my head here. You're like, it's a, you know, like an electrical feeling. And I hear myself saying, yes. All right, this is interesting. And, th and then they say... Um, Oh, and they also said that I begin, uh, they said, good, and now you, they said, I will begin to meet the others in 20 years. So it's got to be time travel. Right? They're telling me what's going to happen 20 years in the future, 73, all right? So just let's, let's catch up here just for a moment. Okay, so he's, he's home alone, gets a phone call. He's got a metallic voice, okay, right, um, sounding like Stephen Hawking. He hears numbers and little clicks. And it tells him um, it's a computer uh, on board a spacecraft or flying saucer from the future, back from the future. He corrects himself again. Um, and they're looking for around 400 young and what was it like, you know, smart minds, right, to teach their technology and that, and now he's adding on that he will then meet, and then he asks him, do you want to participate with us, right? And he says, good, right? This is a sort of, and his, he's kind of implying that he, they sort of, you know, maybe telepathically pushed him towards saying yes. But they were asking him if you, of your free will. So why would they force him to do it? Anyway, um, and so he agrees and they say good like that's just funny like so do you want to do it good uh <laughs> you know gina let's get him uh his uniform and get the paperwork filled out uh mr sarfati's on board um i don't know i'm sorry um okay so and and then then they tell him okay you're going to um meet the rest of these people 20 years in the future Right. And so that's how he knows time travel, too. But let's not they're telling him what's coming in the future. But let's not forget, they already told him they're from the future. So that that but whatever that that's where we're at. So and then they said, then the voice says, go out on your fire escape and we're going to send a ship to pick you up in 10 minutes. All right. So at this point, so I hang up the phone. At this point, I'm scared and I'm, you know, I'm excited, right? To wow. They're going to come pick him up in 10 minutes. Yeah. yeah. And um, so I run down into the street. It's a hot summer night. This is New York. This is uh, Flatbush, 
this is um, it's an Irish, German, uh, Italian, Catholic neighborhood. You know, big church, the Irish bar, the Italian baker, uh, the uh, German bakery where I get these Charlotte Russes and everything. And it's you know, brownstone, and it's it's it, everybody's out. Yeah, you know, it's warm, beautiful night. Everybody's out on the street. The mothers with their kids and the uh, strollers. It's a it's a whole scene out of like a Broadway musical, right? <laughs> and uh, I had a gang. Yeah, I was like my gang. I was, I'm looking. So I find I run. Uh, I I find Neil and Norman Legata. Okay, uh, Neil is 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 my age. You know, thirteen, and he's a strapping, he's a strapping Italian kid. You know, I mean, you know, he's a like you know he's a strong kid mm-hmm. and his little uh, brother uh, uh neil norman i'm sorry norman is his brother who's like 10 years old the two of them so they're part of my and then i run into my winky winky who is a tough irish kid and our mothers yeah you know, was like well we grew up together and the mothers all the mothers knew each other uh and winky he's like uh He's like a price. Fight. He's a really tough Irish kid. Like he'd say, "Yo, know, punch me in the stomach." You know, he had the abs. You know, punch me. You know, and um, and uh, he, he. When I went to Cornell, at uh, age sixteen, he joined the Marines. Okay, he was in the Marines. He was in Vietnam again. Well, no, like this is before Vietnam. No, Korea. Wait a second. No, this is before Vietnam. Let's go, Jack. Did they come pick you up in ten minutes or not? That's what we're all waiting for. We don't we don't want to hear about your friends Winky and, you know, Stinky and Minky and, you know, the prize fighter. Let's go. This is uh 56, yeah. Okay. This is yeah. This is uh, right after Korea. So, and he uh then when he got out of the Marines, his real name is Al Bro, and he became a very well-known uh New York City NYPD homicide detective. Okay, I, th- I don't know if he's still alive. I mean, what does right. this have to do with so anything? These are my, so we all said the flying saucer is coming to get me, coming to pick me up, and you know. So the four of us kids, we go up to my place within the ten minute period, and that's it. Nothing ever happened. Nobody showed up. No, they didn't show up, as far as I know. <laughs> so nothing ever happened. Now I will say this. Um, I have seen in other videos um, that he later claims that um, he did meet some of these people later on in life, 20 years later, and that that came true. And those people, some of those people are names you might know in the community. Hal Putoff, Yuri Geller. That's who Jack Sarfati claims also received these phone calls from the future. And that he then met him later on when they were working on sort of, you know, MK Ultra stuff, remote viewing, telepathy, right? Psychic abilities, telekinesis, all of this stuff. Um, they, th- yeah, that's what, that's what happened. They're all like, yeah, I got that phone call too. You know, so anyway... <coughs> Pardon me, in case you needed to know that. Um, so I don't know. What do y'all think of this story? I'm so curious. Um, I don't know. I don't know how I think about it. Yes, I was laughing during some of it, but not laughing at the story or the person. It was just, you know, the situation. So please, I hope no one gets mad at that. I'm not laughing at, you know, this at all. Um, that was just funny. Um, and sometimes we're going to laugh. Okay, can we not just have a little fun sometimes too on the channel? Jeez. Um uh, yeah, I, I don't know what I think about this. Um, it's interesting. I mean, that's for sure. Um, you know, you often think any story you hear and you go, oh, that's crazy. That just sounds like, you know, nonsense. But then you think if aliens came here, how do we know what they're going to do? How they're going to contact us? We have zero clue. So technically, anything is a possibility. You know, oftentimes for me, it comes down to the person telling the story. And what feeling do I get from them? Not so much what their story is about, if that makes sense. You know. So anyway, um, I don't know. Again, what do y'all think about Jack Sarfati? What do you think of this story? I'm so curious. Can't wait to read the comments. So as always, hope y'all enjoyed. 
the video. If you haven't already, hit that like button. Again, that really helps us out a lot. And it's free, y'all. You know, it's free. Um, and of course, again, hit that subscribe button, y'all. We're trying to get to 3,000 before the end of the year. And like I said, we put out a new video every day, 12 p.m. Central Standard Time. So as always, remember, every day's a gift. We'll see you on the next video tomorrow. Peace, y'all.